Hello everyone and now welcome to a game. This is going to be a game between Lin Gua Gua and Thunder taking place here on Amazonia. This game does come recommended so should be an extremely entertaining game as things are already getting underway. On the bottom left hand side of the map we see Lin Gua Gua spawning as the orange orc. Meanwhile he is going up against the pretty in a pink human Thunder on the top right hand side of the map. Um, I got to say this again, just because the map pool has grown so much, games taking place on Amazonia, even Echo Isle, Terranist Stand, uh, all of those games just seem a bit more fresh as we see much more variety coming out from the game. We are looking at an Altar of Kings nearing completion. This is being sped built, so it will have that Mountain King out just slightly faster than the Orc Hero. You can take a look, Orc Hero still not done. Um, well, starting to be trained as of yet. Orc Burrow now gonna be coming online right behind there, and it is gonna be a Farseer. It feels like an almost, well, full 15 second difference between training of Thunder's Mountain King and that Farseer. All right, that Mountain King, however, will be by his lonesome self, maybe fighting alongside some militia earlier on as the barracks was not sped built. And well, normally the Mountain King cannot creep out by itself. So this is going to be a bit interesting to see what exactly Thunder is trying to pull off in this game. All right, normally the two minute mark is when that hero comes out. This should be about the one minute 45 or one minute 50 second mark this time around here as well we should be calling to arms to try and do a bit of creeping um no all right so mountain king being the sped built and now just running out across the map perhaps this is thunder's way of trying to um, disrupt that farseer you can see the mountain king is out here and his little bit of additional positioning hasn't really amounted to very much a scouting footman does scout out to this farseer here mountain king purposely going around the far side the other way arcane tower already being upgraded here as the farseer should not be able to push in with those wolves that easily mountain king now coming to be coming back down onto the south side and lin gua gua quickly sees what is going on here lin gua gua was trying to do a very fast tech to tier two and instead what are we looking at mountain king going after perhaps some of these uh, peons here all right pressure already being put on into here you can see a quick um, surround by mass militia as the mountain king looking to get in some damage and perhaps shut down a bit of a mining all right great hall one peon is already taken down another one denied there so no experience given as the mountain king well has used up uh, some of its mana already 150 mana used for two storm bolts and it looks as though he's not going to be able to do very much else mountain king does get 25 experience for killing off one peasant or one peon rather the other peon was taken out as well by excuse me by that farseer doing a little bit of denial here as the footman now double backs around perhaps trying to buy a little bit of additional time for the mountain king to retreat back home all right militia clearing out of this creep camp here picks up claws of attack plus five gonna finish off this last rogue perhaps get to level two gets the level two there and now trying to add in some more damage on to this spirit wolf as well tech to tier two has started for thunder meanwhile lin gua gua is nearly at a tier two already as the mountain king now going after this rogue creep camp down to the south here farseer has not gained any experience um that apparently that lone footman perhaps was able to sacrifice himself onto some creeps and well thunder has a significant advantage here with well experience at level two some items and also disrupting a bit of the peons that were back at home 12 workers compared to 10 so only five workers on that lumber line right now as we are going into a tauren chieftain as that second hero mountain king could have easily tried to land a storm bolt onto that farseer farseer has gotten a pee on kill himself but not much orc is lin gua gua right yes orc is in fact lin gua gua i didn't label it but i've been saying lin gua gua a, a couple of times throughout this match already if you just tuned in and tuna fish all right coming back around farseer yes ends up getting trapped up against the trees beautifully done and that's much more difficult to do than it appears as normally um, what well, line of sight makes it a bit difficult to try and land that storm bolt when that 
Farseer is up against the trees. Mountain King picks up another Gauntlet of Ogre Strength plus 3. Now with plus 11 damage and oh, nearly, well, north of 900 hit points, even though he's just at level 2. Alright, that Bash adding in a bit additional damage as well as the Torrent Chieftain could get in a nasty stomp right there. Three footmen already stunned it down. Those footmen trying to escape away. One footman most likely not going to be able to make it away. Gets denied for all of his efforts as the Beast Theory now coming online and a Spirit Lodge. I am a bit curious about a Spirit Lodge. Normally, the Spirit Lodge is used for those Shaman early on to try and get down purges. Um, against a Beastmaster and Archmage summons. Um, this time around, the Spirit Lodge going after... Uh, what is it going to train up? It is going to train up those Shamans, perhaps trying to use Purge as, a, as another ensnare mechanism as well, or perhaps really trying to go for Lightning Shield or um, Lightning Shield or Bloodlust. All right, Footmen trying to get in a decent surround here. Are we going to get a Lucky Bash onto that Farseer? No, we are not. Farseer able to, well, he use that Healing Salve and now heal back up. Now, behind this, is there a Blood Mage being added? There is a Blood Mage to try and siphon mana. There is another Bash right there. Farseer taking significant damage as the units are now looking to just retreat back. We are going into a Barracks Rifleman as well and going into a single Arcane Sanctum, perhaps just for some Priest as we're getting into this battle here. Mountain King, get the Stormbolt off. Uh, well, get the storm bolt off i'm not quite sure who it actually took out torrent chieftain getting some experience farseer getting some experience as well rifleman trying to join in on the battle and there is a nice stomp once again but only hitting one footman here as that footman may end up getting well yes taken out but not denied siphon mana into that uh, into that um Mountain King. Mountain King now has plenty of mana. Should be able to land off some more Storm Bolts. There's some Siphon mana. There is a Stomp. Not really doing all that much as the Footmen are now taking quite significant damage as well. Rifleman going after the Shaman. And now the Blood Mage trying to retreat back. He did get purged. So that is slowing down his walking effect as the Rifleman and this army now looking to retreat back once more. Alright. Coming back through. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get in some Siphon Mana onto that Mountain King. Mountain King could try to land another Storm Bolt here. Rifleman about to get taken down. There is a Storm Bolt there, and that, well, Storm Bolt was really much more to save a Rifleman than to deal damage to those Spirit Wolves, as the Mountain King does need quite a bit of mana now that the, Mount the Blood Mage is completely out of mana. Coming back through Farseer, still sitting at level 1. Torrent Chieftain still sitting at level 1. And this has been a game of harassment. Mountain King, however, getting up to level 3 now. That could be significant problems. Level 2 Stormbolt going up against multiple level 1 heroes. As we see a Siphon Mana and right there. However, Farseer able to break the chain, break the link. Right before that Stormbolt was able to stun him down. Mountain King still needs a bit more mana in order to land another Stormbolt there. Blood Mage still low on mana as well. Farseer trying to keep its distance. The two well, intelligence-based heroes in the back. There's a nice Storm Bolt there as the Farseer, well, unable to get the denial there. Mountain King coming back around. Are we going to see a Stomp to try and break the connection? No, not possible as the Torrent Chieftain was out of mana. Now Torrent Chieftain trying to get in front of the Blood Mage. Blood Mage now down to 84 hit points, continually trying to move around down to 9 hit points. Blood Mage gets the final hit off there as the Torrent Chieftain is now slowed by a sorceress all right all of that coming through in the snare is now going down onto the rifleman and this is a bad scenario as a torrent chieftain does have level two and now has faster movement speed because of that endurance aura mountain king still wandering back around perhaps gonna try and go after a, a raider of some sort yes able to get in a lucky bash there and now continuing this fight as we now see militia now moving out onto the battlefield mountain king still low on mana unable to land those storm bolts blood mage should resurrect rather quickly it was still only sitting at level one as the sorceress could throw down a couple more slows as we're still seeing more damage racking up against all of these spirit wolves here storm bolt now onto the farseer farseer getting taken down there as he was able to as what thunder able to buy a potion of mana and throw down that storm bolt once more meanwhile torrin chief getting a little bit um, in a bit of trouble. Are we going to see a Storm Bolt go down? No boots of speed. That Torrid Chieftain will be able to get away. Sorceress, not quite enough mana there as all of the units are retreating back. 
All right, Priest need to start being added into this, into the repertoire of Thunder. Thunder sitting at 34, Supply over 48, Lin Gua Gua sitting at 37 over 51. Well, MK has some levels on him. Would have got MK Claws over to Blood Mage, though. Um, well, MK is doing a bit more damage, and the Blood Mage has constantly just been trying to hang back and trying to siphon mana. So if you know that your hero is going to be doing a lot of channeling abilities, and then Players trying to maneuver away attack. from that, um, away from the Torrid Chieftain, the auto attack just doesn't matter as much. Coming back through, Mountain King looking to finish things off here. No siphoned mana available here as both of the golems are immune to magic, as the Blood Mage still, well, slowly ge generating mana here. All right, one priest trying to keep all of the units alive. Spellbreakers joining in on the battle as well. Boulder onto the Blood Mage as we should be looking at a scroll of regeneration after this battle here as the Mountain King does get to level 4. Down to the south, level 3 Torrid Chieftain, level 2 Farseer, as the Mountain King does have a bit of levels, Lin Gua Gua, however, is getting some nasty stomps or should be able to get in some nasty stomps soon, especially with that potion of greater mana. We are going into Arcane Sanctum um, for some Spellbreakers. That frontline Spellbreakers are able to absorb, um, well, pretty much shake off all of those stops pretty easily. Blood Mage, I'm surprised, is not, or is siphoning mana out or into the Mountain King and then should be siphoning mana out of that Forest Scroll Shadow Priest here in just a moment. Um, well, nope, not doing that at all. Blood Mage. Low on mana, also has a Tome of Retraining, which may be given to the Mountain King here in just a moment. Gonna sell that Wanda Mana Stealing, Tome of Retraining, and now wanting to go for Thunderclap as well to try and compete with the, well, the, the sheer damage output of the, of the, or yeah, the, the sheer damage output of the Torrent Chieftain when all of your units are stunned. We can see the Voodoo Lounge and all of the Orc buildings having those spiked barricades and making it difficult to try and do any well, significant hit and run tactics. Wards now being placed down here. Are we going to see a Stormbolt land onto a Grunt? Yes, there one Grunt going to easily get taken down as the Blood Mage inches closer to level 3. Where is if the Goblin Zeppelin? Uh, it looks like in a a tower attempt was or a drop was attempted however the Torin chieftain um well not able to do nearly as much Torin chieftain now getting out to move that goblin zeppelin a little bit faster and here we are gonna move on in once more mountain king looking to finish things off here blood mage already seen at level three meanwhile goblin zeppelin gonna go ahead and drop on inside the base in the nice opening here Torin chieftain now we actually respects over to shockwave instead scroll of town portal so all right, tomes of retraining going around everywhere as we could be looking at. Oh, there goes one a poor, um, one poor shaman there. Now, are we going to get any sight up onto the high ground? Arcane Sentry allows the Arcane Tower to actually cast Reveal. Always something to consider if you have an Arcane Tower or two to get that arcane sentry and then be able to cast reveal up on the high side here goblin zeppelin quickly trying to be hired to catch where the other opponent's goblin zeppelin is only to see it quickly get ensnared all right siphon mana um trying to remove all of the mana from that torrent chieftain goblin zeppelin breaks the seal right there as all those un units will be well retreating back with that scroll of town portal look at this Triple watchtowers being placed down at the expansion um, of Thunder by Lin Gua Gua. That is, well, perhaps going to shut down any build. And if Thunder isn't careful, he could perhaps accidentally start trying to build a town hall here and then have it quickly destroyed and for a quick loss of gold. Um, that is, I have seen that happen in, in games past. Mountain King also with now plus nine strength between three gauntlets of Ogre Strength, north of 1,300 hit points at level four. That is a very, very tanky frontline hero as that peon now trying to well, head away there. Lin Gua Gua down to 10, 10 workers here. And what is getting it scouted out? Not those watchtowers. 
as the watchtowers are going to finish and perhaps we are going to look at an expansion at your opponent's base more hit and run tactics farseer does have chain lightning torrent chieftain is he going to get well oh there is a banish right there trying to get a siphon mana but however a storm now goes down onto the torrent chieftain as well mana could uh, have a bit of problems there is another banish no slow there is some siphon mana torrent chieftain however using that scroll of speed able to break that link rather quickly all right once more four scroll shadow priest needs to lose quite or wants to get drained of all of its mana blood mage should try and head back over needs a little bit more mana going to be able to siphon all of that mana out right now get back up to a decent 150 160 mana before picking up a tome of intelligence on that mountain king Players forces are under attack. coming back through well orc players doing what they do best pulling back high high level creeps and then trapping them with ensnare when they're trying to retreat thereby tricking the ai into not attacking and making orc or allowing orc to go after creep camps much more easily than without really taking any serious serious damage there's one clap right there we might see one more clap as the two remaining rock golems come back over torrent chief and now picking up unholy aura we're looking at more watchtowers come down here and well this base is nearly um nearly completed a second watchtower and then all storm bolts coming back across a fortified armor um, well, going to be difficult to take down, but you need to see the actual army here to try and engage as well. Chain Lightning coming back through. Torrent Chief going to go ahead and hit with a Shockwave as well. Priest going to get taken down. Level 3 now on the Farseer and that Torrent Chieftain as the Great Hall is still getting added in here. Sorceress is now trying to retreat back once more. Uh, Rifleman trying to perhaps shoot the great hall before it gets that well powerful fortified armor and greatly t and takes greatly reduced damage from those riflemen peon now, now trying to retreat back as well but the triple guard towers are already in position torrent chieftain low on mana farseer has a potion of greater mana if it wants to try and use it as a fourth watchtower now being added all right ivory towers being placed down by thunder and this is a battle of the expansions here as there is also an expansion by Lin Guagua down to the south. All right, down to the south. Yeah, Stormbolt onto the Farseer. Farseer, however, more importantly, perhaps losing quite a bit of mana from that level two, um, level two siphon mana coming back around little bit more damage coming across here mountain king sitting at level four blood mage purposely gonna back away and allow this mountain king to get up to level five which is gonna be an extremely big deal level five yes right on the money now blood mage perhaps gonna try to pick up that cloak of shadows even though it's not 100 percent necessary does provide a decent amount of uh well protection and gold when sold all right mortar team now working over the time that um, try and take down this great hall however one mortar team is not going to be able to do it all that quickly especially with three peons holding off that distance raider is now going to go ahead and raid on in onto the arcane vault here we can see that there's there is well the raiders do have pillage allowing them to do that hit and run tactic and still get gold back meanwhile the one mortar team covered by a couple of guard towers as well and these guard towers going to act as defense for when that expansion does finally get up all right all that really did was buy a little bit of time the peons trying to keep this gold mine here for as long as it that long as they can but the riflemen and mortar teams should be able to clean that up nicely torrent chiefs are now heading off to the north here lots of repair that is a lot of mortar teams oh well, two mortar teams there with two zero upgrades and now this base is going to end up getting cleaned up chain lightning bouncing around but the mortar teams quickly cleaned up not going up against the riflemen though as the flying machines are now overhead perhaps going to try and shoot down um, that goblin zeppelin only to see an ensnare however catching the flying machine first all right mountain king stormbolt onto a raider there are quad towers right here a nice big thunderclap level four now on the blood mage blood mage gets a banish onto the mountain king in order to get him out of a sticky situation lingwagwa down to the south still does not have that expansion up and operational torrent chieftain farseer does have a way to scroll of town portal out of this position if necessary as a thunder takes down his own rifleman to stay out of high upkeep 
All right, mortar teams now slowly going to be joining in on the battle. Again, there are a couple of peons here. And with those mortar teams in position, they should be able to clear out these watchtowers with little to no effort. All right, Cloak of Shadows is right there um, acting. Well, Cloak of Shadows is there. Is there a reveal or what is actually revealing this Blood Mage? Is there some sort of sentry? Um, I don't really see the watch reward anywhere nearby. Anything that would actually reveal this Blood Mage. Goblin Zeppelin still overhead, continuing the fight once again. Mountain King going to go ahead and Stormbolt onto that Farseer. Farseer, well, losing quite a bit of mana before that Siphon mana link can be broken by that Goblin Zeppelin. Now, there's wards. I don't see them. Oh, back here? That Sentry Ward? Can see all the way up there? All right. Alright, mortar teams clearing out all of the towers now. However, you can see that there was a, pre a pretty big delay into Thunder's expansion. Thunder now having... Well, um, Thunder now having to build his expansion from scratch. Meanwhile, Lin Gua Gua sitting on multiple watchtowers here, spread apart. Going to be very difficult to try and get in that splash damage across as the watchtowers look like, well, at least two out of the four should be completed by the time this main army makes its way A into position. All right, the question is going to be the timing here. Raider's going to try to dive on in. A chain lightning shockwave expansion quickly getting taken out here once more. Torn Chieftain trying to dodge a little bit of that damage. Flying Machine trying to go after some of these extra targets. And Lin Guagua's hit and run tactics are really starting to take its toll. Level 4 now on the Torn Chieftain. Level 2 Endurance Aura now opening things up as the Mountain King tries to finish off. Oh, gets in one final shockwave on that poor peasant as the units now making their way back down to the south. Lin Guagua definitely using the hit and run tactics very well. He's up on bases, shutting down expansions, has a pillage, and trying to make up for a bit of a hero experience disadvantage. Mortar teams, however, are in position to try and clear up some of these watchtowers here as we see a bit more siphon mana coming back in. All right, Farseer wanted to finish off that Spellbreaker. However, the Mountain King did the job for him. No experience there as the Mortar teams still pushing in slowly but surely. All right, Torrent Chieftain getting into a bit of a stun. Torrent Chieftain wants to throw down a stomp, ends up getting surrounded here. Is he going to be able to... No, not a stomp. He's going to get siphoned mana, try to break free, perhaps try to land a Shockwave as more and more of those... Uh, more and more of those mortar teams are going to get taken out. Another Stormbolt goes down. Torrin Chieftain out of mana once again. He wants to use that mana for shockwaves against those riflemen, but has not been able to do that consistently or efficiently at all. Back off to the north here is no expansion available, so no real reason to come back off to the north to try and um, well, try and attack anything as the base is completely wide open and empty. What is going on though? Lin Gua Gua sitting on two bases has 40 over 62 supply. There is not many workers left for Thunder as the main bases have been mined out. Only three workers left for Thunder as he's trying to reestablish this base. Chain wave and could take down those last three workers as Thunder should perhaps be training up a couple of workers to at least transition them back over here to this expansion. All right. Tower City, uh, definite problems here. Raiders, also with Ensnare, should be able to dive on into all of those mortar teams. Economically speaking, Thunder is in a bit of trouble. Meanwhile, Lin Guagua still staying in no upkeep. Can, can build up a bit of a bank as much as he wants. Coming back through, Farseer, Torn Chieftain, still looking to get a little bit more experience, perhaps close out that level difference as Thunder still has a level 5 Mountain King and a level 4 Blood Mage that needs to be dealt with. All right. A bit of, exp I believe, experience was given there. The Watchtowers didn't get that final shot off. Another Ensnare goes down onto that Renegade Wizard once more. It does have medium armor, making that siege damage a little bit, um, a little bit less of an issue as we're looking at the Mountain King now going to go ahead and get a Stormbolt down onto that Raider. Raider could have a very bad day. Yes, takes a Thunderclap and a Stormbolt 
and takes quite a bit of damage here. Meanwhile, ensnare onto a spellbreaker, and that spellbreaker is just seeing its hit points fall fall slowly but surely. All right, and ensnare does go down, but not going to be enough to finish anything off here as the Torrin Chieftain wants to hit, more importantly, that Mortar Team and that Rifleman. Two very, very low hit point um, or magic. Uh, vulnerable low hit point units as the torrent chieftain now makes its way back off to the north all right there's that um, there's a little bit of damage there we can see unholy aura and vampiric aura on that torrent chieftain as the units are getting ready to engage once more expansion for thunder now up and operational again siphon mana into that mountain king once more level three thunderclap if you remember over level three stormbolt as both sides finally have their economy going once more All right, the, the pacing of this game, the heroes have been significantly lower level. We're at 25 minutes into this game, and so far still no maxed or level 6 heroes at all. We can see also that there are some decent creep camps left available to try and well, try and clear out. Lin Guaguach could go after them and then really close out that hero level advantage, perhaps even um, take it back from his opponent as so we are looking at Arcane Sentry finally able to spot all of these wards and with multiple Arcane Towers all across the map, well, all of those Arcane Towers have that the ability to reveal. Now, there's a quick reveal right there and Thunder realizes that is a lot of towers to try and fight and deal with as the mortar team is now coming back across here to well land in a bit of damage all right there goes one the mountain king going to continue to press on in with that storm bolt stunning anything that tries to get in the way right there chain lightning doesn't reach or doesn't bounce in the direction that they were hoping for torrent chief now looking to retreat back here and the blood mage has been able to hold off and, and keep that Torin chieftain at bay with his own with, with those shockwaves however there are no priests in this group right now mortar teams also purposely spreading apart a bit just so that one shockwave doesn't hit all, both of them unless that Torin chieftain is along that line right there which will be would be rather dangerous mortar teams shell shocking their opponent to death you can see the peons continuing to fall here there's a chain lightning it does a bounce across into those back mortar teams but not the first or second hit blood mage purposely banished himself so that he could dive in a siphon mana and then perhaps try and retreat back out interestingly done as the as the blood mage banishes himself siphons mana and then banishes again to well shake off any of that damage all right really no magic damage available there is a thunderclap farseer could be in trouble but now a quick change and tech into wind riders lin gua gua comes back across here is going to try and finish off some of those units and able to do exactly that lin gua gua up to 55 supply he does have wind riders we are only looking at stronghold we are not looking at fortress we do not have in venom spears as mortar teams are now going to be taken down as well all right the rock Golems could try and go after some additional creep camps, perhaps try and get that Torrent Chieftain up to level 5, um, and that would be a very big deal indeed. Meanwhile, Thunder wasn't expecting the tech swap into Wind Riders. I definitely was not. That is a large number of Wind Riders ready to go. There's a quick ensnare onto the Granite Golem. Another ensnare constantly going down, trying to get in front of that Granite Golem there. And well, as it's dancing its way around, endurance or a given to the Torin chieftain that's going to be sold without a shadow of a doubt Torin chieftain will get to level five here and is that going to be enough of a change as we now see fly machines trying to join back in Torin chieftain sitting at level five storm boat onto a wind rider wind rider now trying to go back against those flying machines and take them down siphon nana out of the Torin chieftain Torin chieftain now trying to retreat back a couple of ensnares do go down as well as the wind riders need to take the long way round before getting back in to, um, and regrouping with the army wind riders uh, did not want to fly above those riflemen as strong as wind riders are they are well we weak in that they are four supply units that only have a 570 hit points all right
at this point and stage in the game without Fortress and without Envenom Spears, those Wind Riders, that the damage potential is significantly less. It is those hit and run tactics with that with those Wind Riders that gives lingering damage onto all of those units that really starts to add up. Stormbolt onto the Raider. There it sees a bit of damage. Mountain King trying to go after this one Raider. There, Raider down to 92 hit points. Gets a couple of ensnares as we're going to see a bit of engagement. Troll, um, well, Troll Bat Rider trying to escape away as the Torrent Chief and Farsi are now going after all of these units. Potion of Lesser and Vulnerability used there. Torrent Chieftain now, well, perhaps going to try and keep a little bit of distance. W w wards all over the place to keep track of multiple things as we're looking at, well, the Spellbreakers getting taken down one at a time. Lin Guagua looks like he's, well, starting to pull ahead in this matchup able to hold on to a significant supply advantage as there's not many well, gold mines left on the map to try and uh, take an economic advantage away from Lin Gua Gua. Level 5, level 5 though, Blood Mage now sitting at level 5 with level 3 Scythe Mana. If that Blood Mage can keep the Torrent Chieftain and Farseer in check with their mana, well, that is how Thunder plans on winning this game. Lin Gua Gua, however, has hit and run tactics with Wind Riders in mind to try and poke things apart. There are a couple of fly machines here, two zero upgrades. Wind Riders getting into position. Goblin Shredder joining in on the battle. Arcane Tower going after the Goblin Shredder. The Goblin Shredder does deal 34 to 61 damage. All right, big thunderclap right there. Not only hitting one Raider as Siphon Mana now coming back across here. Wind Riders are getting taken down pretty quickly. Stormbolt onto another Wind Rider there. Wind Riders are getting picked apart by those flying machines. Meanwhile, the Wind Riders now trying to well, exchange blows against those flying machines who have significantly lower hit points, but does deal um, great damage. And on top of that, does a little bit of splash damage as well. Wind Riders trying to hide up against the corner. There's those flying machines uh, well, exchanging volleys around back and forth as Thunder now chasing after those Wind Riders once more. Mountain King, well, staying nearby. Patrol Bat finished off right there. Wind Riders um, trying to go after the flying machines and Thunder, well, even a number in terms of wind riders versus fly machines looks like he's actually able to win out ahead right there and you can see that slight armor difference how big of a difference that makes overall all right torin chieftain and farseer his the army of lin gua gua now down to 39 supply compared to 47 mountain king gets up to level six during all of the well, wind riders falling and that is the problem with wind riders they are high experience units with very low hit points giving a lot of experience to the enemy heroes when they are taken down torrent chieftain still sitting at level five here thousand hit points decent armor going up against a mountain king with 1500 hit points not as much armor but still very difficult to try and shut him down especially when he has still that avatar mode if he needs it down to the south here lin gua gua still in a bit of trouble this is a long drawn out game torrent chieftain does get in a big big well a shockwave right there if he can get another shockwave that can greatly change the outcome of the game are you going to see a shockwave yes we do but it doesn't really take down as many riflemen as we needed to see it take down for the torrent chieftain to make that big of a play Torrent Chieftain now trying to escape back around takes a Stormbolt. We're going to see a bit of fighting. There is a Thunderclap there. Torrent Chieftain in a lot of trouble. It does have a Potion of Lesser and Vulnerability. Going to go ahead and use it. Doesn't have uh, any sort of mana to try and get some AoE damage across all of those units here as a low hit point Rifleman still able to survive. Torrent Chieftain, well, low on mana here. No shop in the back. We are training up additional Shaman as well. And really, the Torrent Chieftain not being able to get to level 6 is the big deal. All right, a quick ensnare onto the Rifleman. There is a quick, well, a banish onto the Torrent Chieftain. Torrent Chieftain going to take a Stormbolt on the banish. And then now, the Blood Mage could be in trouble. What is going down here? Blood Mage uses the Cloak of Shadows in order to stay alive. No, out of all of the wards on the map, there are no wards inside his base as the Torrent Chieftain gets bolted in the back and unable to escape there. 
Cloak of Shadows actually useful during daytime. Siphon mana back in there as the Blood Mage could end up getting taken down. All right, damage is getting racked back up. However, the Blood Mage down to 135 hit points, able to stay alive as Avatar is keeping, well, is leading the army, absorbing damage and dishing out quite a bit as well. Farseer. Well, I'm going to resurrect the Torrent Chieftain at the Tavern. Meanwhile, Thunder is sitting on 1,300 gold. Could buy a lot of items if he wants. Going to siphon mana away from a Shaman here. And, and now get up to level 6 as well. Orange Bird should be out onto the battlefield in just a second. That Orange Bird dealing out so much magic damage as well. 26 supply compared to 45. Torrent Chieftain trying to get back into the swing of things. Chain Lightning finding a bit of damage here as we see a, a bit coming back across here. Torrent Chieftain going to try and get a Shockwave. Does find uh, the Mortar Team in the back. Scroll of Healing Muse right there as the Torrent Chieftain is still trying to dance around. Going after the Blood Mage. Blood Mage uses a Potion of Lesser Invulnerability to try and survive for a little while longer. Torrent Chieftain could get in a big Shockwave here in just a moment. Perhaps waiting for the Blood Mages. Well, oh, Scroll of Town Portal used in time as still the Blood Mage survives at, what, sub 40 hit points again. Farseer trying to get healed back up. A couple of flying machines in the middle portion of the map, making sure that Wind Riders do not join back in onto the battlefield. And with that, that is going to be the game. A long, drawn out, unconventional matchup between Thunder and Lin Guagua. Thunder able to take the Eka, or the hero level advantage early on by speed building his Mountain King, getting it to level 2, and, and pretty much harassing with the Mountain King as though it was some sort of agility-based or ranged-based hero early on. Once it got to level 2, um, it just never let up on that hero advantage, being able to use Stormbolt and Thunderclap effectively throughout the game. Lin Guagua did a great job in the mid portion of the game trying to secure the economic advantage, but Thunder was already there with the mortar teams, able to shut down all of those towers and just play a very cold and calculating game to come away with the victory. The final resource score also shows Lin Guagua mined more than Thunder, but in the end, Lin Guagua's tech change um, wasn't able to catch Thunder off guard enough. And eventually those five or six Wind Riders just fed additional experience to the Mountain King and Blood Mage, giving them the win. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it.